Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about what's happening in the Russian economy and specifically to talk about payment problems that Russia is now having as a result of the secondary sanctions that are being applied against them. In December 2023, the USA ramped up the secondary sanctions policing and notified countries such as China, India and Turkey that they would face secondary sanctions if they facilitated payments for products that were helping Russia in its war against Ukraine. And as a result of that increase in the sanctions, Russia is now facing major problems actually making and receiving payments from countries like China and India. And this is having a double whammy on Russia's economy because firstly, it's having an impact on its sale of fossil fuels such as oil and gas. But now it's also having a problem with regards to making payments for key electronic and technology products that China has been providing to Russia. As a result of the sanctions that have been applied against Russia since the invasion of Ukraine, Russia has no longer been able to access cutting edge technology. And so in order to try to get its hands on that technology, it's been relying on China producing copy products, which it's been buying to replace all of the products that it's lost access to. But because of this increase in the sanctions, Russia is now facing problems actually accessing that second type of technology. And this is going to have a potentially devastating impact on Russia, its oil and gas industry and the Russian economy. So in today's video, we'll talk about the concept of secondary sanctions and why countries like China and India are concerned about being hit with those sort of sanctions. We'll have a look at the increase in the sanctions that was announced in December 23. We'll then have a look at some press reports published in Russia talking about the problems that Russian businesses are currently having making and receiving payments from China, India, Turkey and the United Arab Emirates. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think the impact of this increase in the sanctions is having on the Russian economy and what's likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months. But before we get started on all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that's supporting the channel. Ever since I had my hacking incident, I have been hit with a wave of love and generosity. And that has really boosted my confidence and really helped me to produce more videos. So thank you so much for your support. And if you've bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks, thank you for the time and effort that you've taken to do that. And if you've signed up as a long-term supporter, either through Patreon or YouTube membership or buy me a coffee membership, Thank you for that long-term support. It really helps to keep me motivated and posting more videos like this, so thank you. On the 22nd of December, 2023, the Joe Biden administration introduced increased financial sanctions, placing a burden on financial institutions to make sure that any payments between counterparties in their home country and Russian businesses were double and triple checked to make sure that they weren't breaching any sanctions. Following the introduction of the original sanctions, large companies in countries like China had an administrative burden to make sure that any counterparties that they were dealing with in Russia were not on the sanctioned list and that they were not supplying any products that were deemed to be sensitive. However, Russia was able to bypass a lot of these sanctions by dealing with much smaller entities that weren't coming under the same sort of regulation. However, the USA has now realized that all of these companies still have to use the financial system in order to make and receive payments. And it's that financial system that the USA is now clamping down on and placing the burden onto all of the banks and the payment systems to double check that anybody that's using them has gone through the rigorous process of checking that all of the counterparties in Russia are clear and not on the sanctioned list. And by using the financial system, this becomes a much more effective mechanism for controlling the sanctions because Chinese banks don't want to run the risk of being hit with secondary sanctions because that would place them into severe difficulty when it comes to making payments to all of the other counterparties. And let's not forget that whilst China is really important to Russia, China is by far the biggest buyer of Russian fossil fuels. From China's point of view, Russia is a relatively small market. It's exporting more than 90% of all of its products everywhere else around the world. So those Chinese institutions 
can't afford to be hit with secondary sanctions and prevented from being able to make payments and receive payments from the rest of the world because that's the lifeblood of the Chinese economy. And the US has identified this and as a direct result of the increase in these sanctions, Chinese banks have had to significantly increase their compliance and checks and regulations with regards to all payments that are being made and received from Russia. And this is having a disastrous impact on Russia's cash flow and also its ability to buy new products from China. As a result of the sanctions that were applied against Russia, they've been cut off from buying things like technology from the rest of the world. And so they're now highly dependent on China. And if they can't make those payments, obviously they can't receive the products that they're looking to buy. So before we go on to talk about the problems that Russia is currently experiencing with its payments, I wanted to talk about secondary sanctions. When we talk about sanctions, you immediately think about Russia being hit with a variety of bans and restrictions as a result of its invasion of Ukraine. Because a lot of its trading counterparties from the West did not agree with Russia's decision to invade Ukraine, they wanted to do something that had a financial penalty from Russia's perspective. And so they turned their back on Russia, stopped buying oil and gas products directly from Russia, and also prevented Russia from selling other things into their economies. So this was a way of really cutting Russia's income in order to try to get Russia around the table and agree some form of ceasefire. So this was really designed to hurt Russia and stop the war. But when we're talking about secondary sanctions, these aren't sanctions that are being applied against the country because they're doing something that nobody else agrees with. What secondary sanctions are, are basically a restriction that applies to any country that's dealing with Russia. So essentially what we're talking about is the sanctions being applied against Russia have a carry-on impact. So if you're doing something that facilitates Russia, that helps them to do things that they can't do because the original sanctions are stopping them buying things such as technology, then if you're selling secondary technology to Russia and allowing them to effectively replace the technology that they would have bought directly from places like the USA and the UK, then you are potentially then at risk of being hit with sanctions yourself. And what secondary sanctions look like are financial penalties and restrictions that are applied against those companies that are dealing with Russia. So a good example would be an electronics business based in China that's producing microchips. Now that company obviously doesn't have anything to do with what's happening in Ukraine. They're not looking to support the war. But by selling microchips to Russian businesses, they are potentially allowing those Russian businesses to use that technology in things like weaponry that can be supplied into Ukraine. So as a result of that link, those Chinese electronics companies are facing potential sanctions if it's proved that they're selling products to Russia that are then being used to help with the war. So what's happening right now is that the increase in the secondary sanctions is putting a burden onto all of the companies that are dealing with Russian businesses to prove categorically that the products that they're selling have nothing to do with Ukraine. And in order to do that, they have to go through a detailed documentation process. So firstly, those companies will have to prove who the counterparty is in Russia. And if that counterparty, whether it be a company or an individual based in Russia, is on the sanctioned list, so they've basically been put on the list that says nobody's allowed to deal with them, then obviously that company is not allowed to do that trade. However, the detailed sanctions are now going one step further. You also have to have a look at who the shareholders of those companies are. And if any of those shareholders are on the sanctioned list, then you're not allowed to make that trade. And in addition to checking the shareholders, companies also need to make sure that all of the financial institutions that they're dealing with are clear and not on any sanctioned list. So what this means is that there's now a big administrative burden on all of the companies that are dealing with Russian counterparts, but it's not just the companies themselves all of their financial counterparts in their home country. So if we're talking about a Chinese business, the business itself will have to keep records checking that everybody they're dealing with is clear and free of any sanctions. 
but also the payment system that they're using. So if they're using a Chinese bank to make the payment or to receive payments, then that bank will also have to go through the same checks. So a Chinese company will need to produce all of the paperwork and keep its own records. It will then also need to provide all of that data to its bank and the bank will need to go through the same checks. So they'll have a compliance department that needs to make sure that everything meets all of the criteria. And anybody in the chain, so if you've got a bank, then moving through a payment system, then that payment system will need to make sure that these payments are clear. So what we've got here are a lot of hurdles that can really hold up these payments. And that's one of the problems that Russia is now facing. Firstly, it's facing the prospect of not receiving payments because if any problems are found anywhere in all of those checks, then those Chinese companies won't actually make that payment. But secondly, even if you get a payment that's authorized by all of the different checks, it's adding weeks and potentially months to the payments actually being made to Russian companies. So we've got a huge potential here for both payments to be stopped and also hugely delayed. And that's causing major problems from Russia's point of view, because even if they're making sales, they're not actually getting paid, they're not receiving the cash. And when they're buying things, it's taking much, much longer to actually get everything approved and then for the products to be shipped. At the end of a recent four day trip to China, US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned Chinese financial institutions that they must not facilitate Russia's war in Ukraine. In an interview at the end of her tour, she said, I stress that companies, including those in the PRC, must not provide material support for Russia's war and that they will face significant consequences if they do. Any banks that facilitate significant transactions that channel military or dual-use goods to Russia's defense industrial base expose themselves to the risk of US sanctions. And in direct response to the increase in the financial sanctions, it was recently reported in the Commerzant newspaper in Russia that Russian businesses are now struggling to make payments to China for electronic goods. The Russian newspaper reported that since the end of March, Chinese banks have began blocking payments from Russian companies for components used for assembling electronics. Difficulties first arose making payments in December, and this was related predominantly to finished products at that time. However, it's now coming to light that there are problems with making payments for components, for servers, storage systems, and laptops. And experts have noted that China is actually a monopoly supplier to Russia, so Russian companies may experience serious difficulties and production delays. Since the end of March, domestic electronic manufacturers have been receiving letters from Chinese partners stating that payments from Russian legal entities are not going through Chinese banks. And Commerzant has reported that payments are being blocked even for those organizations that have entered into long-term contracts for the production and supply of components for electronics assembly with Russian clients. The Russian IT business, F Plus, was quoted as saying, we, like leading industrial players, are under pressure from secondary sanctions and are working to mitigate their consequences as much as possible. And Alexander Kalilin, the founder of Russian technology business JSC Sovereign Mobile Initiative Holdings, confirmed problems with paying for services for the supply and production of electronics through Chinese banks. He said that his business had not missed any payments that were due to China. However, since the beginning of April 24, problems have arisen with components and kits. Domestic developers who ordered components from China cannot begin the final assembly of their products in the Russian Federation. And he went on to say that the central bank of the Russian Federation should intervene in the situation. Julia Solenskia, the president of the customs and logistics broker KBT in Russia, said the general problem with payments to China began during February and has now reached its climax. She estimates that more than half of Russian importers have not been able to make payments successfully to their Chinese counterparts, regardless of whether the product is sanctioned, and added that for this reason, shipments of goods from China have fallen by three times since the problems with the payment started, and payment schemes have still not been found to ensure payment is received with certainty. Alternative payment scenarios are currently being investigated in Russia. However, Russian electronics manufacturers have estimated that the current delays will add at least six months to their processes as a result of the fact that there have not been any shipments of components or assembly kits for the last two or three months. 
Another Russian news source, Izvestia, has reported that Chinese banks are now asking for detailed information on every single payment, including whether there is any relationship with countries such as Ukraine, Cuba or Syria. Several of China's largest banks have tightened controls over payments from Russia, and to approve such transactions, Bank of China, which is the fourth largest of all of the Chinese banks, has begun to request data on whether the operation is connected to the LPR and DPR, which are two of the annexed regions of Ukraine, Crimea, Iran, North Korea, Cuba or Syria. Other information is also being requested, for example, whether the sender or recipient of the payment is associated with the Russian military, military industrial complex or military industrial base. And it's been reported that if any Russian business answers in the affirmative, the payment is likely to be rejected as Chinese banks want to relieve themselves of any responsibility with regards to secondary sanctions. Chinese credit institutions began requesting such information at the start of 2024, even if the payment comes from a third party country, so not direct from Russia. Also since the start of this year, several Chinese banks have stopped accepting transactions in Chinese Yuan. Among them are Ping An Bank and Bank of Ningbo. And Izvestia has also reported that because of the risk of secondary sanctions, Turkey and the United Arab Emirates are now also limiting payments from Russia. Up until the recent introduction of the increased policing of the sanctions by the USA, the majority of the sanctions that were applying against Russia were applied against the sale of their oil and gas products. So this was a way of limiting Russia's income. But the impact of the latest policing is now starting to hurt Russia in terms of accessing technology. As a result of the original batch of sanctions, Russia have been banned from buying the latest technology. And this is a big problem from Russia's point of view because their oil and gas facilities are really complicated. A lot of the Russian oil and gas facilities are based in areas with really cold climates. So there are lots of things that can go wrong. So they have cutting edge technology to make sure that they bypass all of those problems. Now, one of the problems that Russia has is because they lost access to all of their counterparties following the invasion of Ukraine, companies like ExxonMobil, BP and Shell all exited Russia and cut their ties, no longer have any relationship. That's a problem from Russia's point of view because those companies actually constructed and designed those facilities so they know how they work inherently. And because they need constant updating, they need to have lots of technology to replace things as they both wear out and become redundant. That's a major problem from Russia's point of view because they can't just pick up the phone and ask ExxonMobil to send a new batch of microprocessors when something breaks down. They're now having to find alternative ways. And over the last two years, there have been a lot of reports that Russia has been able to access some technology from China copy technology, things that are the replacement of all of the technology that they've been using historically. But because of these new secondary sanctions that are now being enforced by the Chinese financial system, that's causing problems for Russia because they can't just keep happily buying all of that tech directly from China. They're now having to prove that none of this tech is going to find its way into anything to do with the war. And of course, if you're buying microchips that are going to be used in an oil and gas facility, there is a potential that those same microchips could be used in some sort of warfare or weaponry. So this is a major issue from Russia's point of view. And if they do now lose access to all of the technology that they've been buying from China, that means that the oil and gas facilities are likely to continue aging. And when problems occur, they won't be able to fix them. And this could add to the problems that Russia already has. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that Russia has cut back 1 million barrels of its oil production over the last 12 months. It says that that was part of the OPEC plus cutbacks. However, there are major question marks as of whether or not these are actually because of production problems. Russia has now also banned the export of all gasoline products for the next six months. And again, this indicates that there are problems with production. And if Russia can't access technology to keep everything going as it should be, then it's likely that more production problems will occur as we go forward. And that's going to hurt the Russian economy further because they'll have to cut back on the supply of oil and the sale of oil, and therefore their income will fall again. 
So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think the restrictions that are now being applied on the financial system, particularly in China, is a really interesting development in terms of the sanctions that are being applied against Russia. The first round of sanctions that were applied against Russia were designed to limit the markets that Russia could sell its fossil fuels into. And Russia was able to bypass the majority of those sanctions by finding new markets predominantly in China and India. And that situation has continued over the last couple of years. The West has obviously introduced price caps to try to limit the amount that Russia is earning from those oil sales. But as we've talked about in previous videos, Russia has been finding ways around that. And up until recently, Russia was still selling oil to India and China above the $60 per barrel cap. However, because of the increase in the financial sanctions and the threat of secondary sanctions against any company that's dealing with Russia, we're now starting to see a reduction in the amount of oil trade. Indian companies recently came out and said that they're not prepared to buy any oil that was being delivered by Sovcomflot, which is Russia's largest tanker fleet, because that business has been sanctioned. But what we're seeing now is that the banks in China and India and Turkey and the UAE and everywhere else are having to go through rigorous checks to make sure that nobody involved in any of this chain has been sanctioned and also that the products themselves don't have any risk of being used in military warfare. And what this is now showing is that Russia is vulnerable, not just from sales, from the sale of all of its oil and gas products, but also vulnerable in terms of its supplies. Because over the last two years, Russia has become entirely dependent on China for its technology. The rest of the West has turned its back on Russia. It's not supplying any microchips or any advanced technology. So really, China is the only port of call from Russia's perspective. And because of these new sanctions, what we are seeing is that Chinese banks are really focusing in on what's being supplied and putting pressure on Chinese companies to make sure that firstly, they're not providing anything that could be used in terms of the military conflict. But secondly, that nobody involved in those deals has been put onto the sanctions list. And what this is doing is severely restricting both the cash flow that Russia is receiving for the sale of its goods, but more importantly, it's stopping the supply of future electronics. And Russia is entirely dependent on that supply because as we discussed earlier in the video, Russia's oil and gas business is high tech and therefore it is dependent upon the constant supply of the latest microchips. So if Russia does find that it can't actually get those supplies, firstly, the oil and gas industry is at threat. But secondly, if you think about all of the other businesses in Russia that have a reliance upon technology, these days, everybody is dependent on technology to some extent, whether it be just the use of computers or payment systems or processing or anything that you can think of. Microchips are basically in everything these days. They're even in your fridge. Things that you wouldn't even dream of needing microchips have them today because everything is becoming a smart product. So we're becoming more and more dependent on technology. And unless you have your own technology industry in your country, you're dependent on your counterparties. And because of the sanctions, Russia is now entirely dependent on China. And if it can't make those payments to keep that technology coming, then it won't receive any. And Russia is going to go backwards in terms of where it's going compared with the rest of the world. So this is a major problem from Russia's point of view. Firstly, the secondary sanctions are definitely restricting the amount of income that Russia is earning from the sale of its oil and gas products. We're seeing more and more companies being sanctioned on a weekly basis and India and China are taking these secondary sanctions seriously because the majority of their trade is with the rest of the world. Russia is a relatively small country. It has 144 million people out of a global population of more than 8 billion. So Russia is lost in the roundings in terms of the export markets for India and China. And therefore, neither country can afford to ignore the sanctions because if they get hit with secondary sanctions, they're going to lose all of their markets. And that just isn't a risk that any of those countries want to take. So this is really a situation where the walls are closing in on Russia because they want to carry on trading with countries like India and China. But India and China are now much more cautious. 
The payments are taking much longer to be approved because of all of the paperwork and the financial hurdles that everybody's got to jump over. And that's causing major problems from Russia. And over the next three to six months, it's likely that it's going to restrict the amount of income that Russia is earning. They will get paid less. They might still be making those deliveries of oil and gas, but they might not be getting paid for them. And secondly, they're not going to be able to buy all of the things that the Russian economy is dependent upon. That's going to put Russia back. It's going to reduce their productivity and efficiency and further reduce their income. So overall, the increase in the policing of the secondary sanctions is severely bad news for Russia and the Russian economy. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end, and here's something to put a smile on your face.